Hang on, I think you're on mute. Do you have me now? Um, so this is an advanced internals course, effectively. Um, so this will be low level. I'm not going to explain how to do D-trace. I'm going to assume you know it. And if you don't, take notes, go home and learn. Um, you feel free to, to send me questions. Um, is there anyone who's never heard of my blog? A mm, couple people. <laughs> Okay, have you ever seen her before? Yeah. That's my beautiful wife. Uh, and, and be nice because if I'm away from her for more than 24 hours, I get very grumpy, so I'm <laughs> liable to go off. Uh, so I'm Ben Rocket, Director of Systems uh, Engineering at Joint Cloud Computing Provider. Um, our entire infrastructure runs on Solaris Express. Uh, we do everything on ZFS, absolutely everything. So we've done a little bit of this. It's highly production stable. Uh, and uh, some of the, the largest uh, Web 2.0 applications out there are running on this stuff quite successfully. Um, it was actually largely uh, ZFS that was able to get Twitter to where they got uh, before going off and doing other things. So, um, and also I'll, I'll point out since there was a, a lot of discussion on things like uh, auditing and things throughout the day, um, several, I've built several tools to help people get started with using things like auditing and some of the things we discussed earlier in the day during the security session. So uh, if you're interested in doing some of those sorts of, of things like auditing and advanced logging and building your own reporting tools, I've recently blogged a lot of that stuff, so check that out. The slides are available, couplecom slash lisa.pdf. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, Ben at CuddleTech.com if you have any questions you don't want to ask here uh, or you want to get more in depth or you want to talk about specific use cases or something, feel free to email me. Okay, so the big questions with ZFS. Some of the big common ones you'll ask when you get serious about it is, you know, is node 5 of 150 struggling in terms of I.O.? Is I.O. as efficient as it can be? Uh, how fast are requests actually being answered? What is the mix of synchronous versus asynchronous I.O.? Um, do I need to tune? Uh, and how do I back it up? Uh, ZFS is, is uh, in a lot of ways, I think of it much like a Ferrari. It's inherently simple to use. There's a wheel, two pedals, right? What's difficult to the, about that? But it's masking a huge amount of complexity under the covers. Right? And if you own, if you should be so lucky as to own a Ferrari, you'll very quickly want to learn quite a lot about its internals. Um, when it makes a certain noise when you hit you know, 5,000 RPM, what exactly does that mean? Right? You're going to start digging into it. You see the same sort of thing with ZFS. It's very easy to get started, right? One command, zpool, create, my pool, disk, one, two, three, four, bam, you're off and running, you got it going. Okay? Nothing could be easier. Um, but as you start to do large deployments, you start putting big databases on it, you start asking questions and wanting to know why does this behavior look a little different? Is it just because I'm used to driving a Miata and I'm not used to that pitch and whine of the engine, those sorts of things? And so that's kind of where, where we want to get interested. First uh, thing I want to do, and this is the slide that will uh, prove that I'm not a Sun employee, is to correct a couple of assumptions. So, um, tuning ZFS is evil. This is true. Um, evil being defined as contrary to the will of the creator. <laughs> I'll be at the Irish pub next door. We can have some theological discussions. But ZFS was intended not to be tuned. Yeah, it doesn't mean um, that it doesn't need to happen. But it does mean that it wasn't the original intention, and if it needs to be, that's considered a bug. ZFS doesn't require tuning. That's false, right? We haven't hit that magic point, and there are times where you need to turn things on and off, and you need to try and be even smarter than it is. It can be difficult to find that golden spot, but you do need to do some tuning, especially if you're doing a very large deployment. 
ZFS is a memory hog. That's true. That's absolutely true. It uses a lot of memory. But we're going to get into exactly why that is. ZFS is slow. This is false. There are a lot of reasons it will look very slow. Statistically speaking, using your old school Berkeley fast file system UFS knowledge, it will look statistically slow. And it's not. We'll talk about that. And ZFS won't allow corruption, which is false. Now, ZFS is always consistent on disk. Always. But if you write bad bits, it'll record them in beautiful, messed up goodness, right? There's some people who, who deploy databases on ZFS and they've heard all about how ZFS is very advanced and catching corruption and all this, and they start thinking, you know, they end up having a corruption issue in their database and they can't figure out why. You know, you're, you know there's a number of different places in this chain, which is databases, and there's a lot of places where you can start screwing up table space. Right? Um, and sometimes ZFS will give them, uh, they'll, they'll have a false sense of comfort. Right? Um, it will write exactly what you tell it to write, and if it doesn't, it's got to let you know and deal with the problem. But you still do need to follow all the best practices in dealing with databases and protecting table spaces and stuff like that. So, one of the greatest things about ZFS is its amazing efficiency. ZFS Arc is extremely efficient. Um, one great example, and, and I see this constantly, um, there's one system I have that's had 32 production zones, uh, Slayer's containers, all different customers, all running cloud uh, applications and stuff. They're all doing different things. There are 120,000 requests per second. None of them actually touch the disk, right? You can do a whole lot of read I.O. without ever actually even touching the disk, which is incredible. Um, ZFS transaction group syncs are extremely efficient and provide a really clean and orderly way to flush out to disk. The way that we pipeline I.O. in and orderly flush it out to disks, this is the, one of the reasons that you hear people say that you can actually build um, very high performance storage subsystems actually using like five, you know, uh, 5400 RPM disks, assuming you can figure, find a place to buy them. Um, and ZFS prefetch is really in intelligent and is probably smarter than you. Don't turn it off if you don't need to. Um, but it can vary greatly based on workload. And this is true with any type of advanced caching or prefetch technology that you see um, in any product. Um, it, it can be very smart, but sometimes it's maybe smarter than it should be. And you want it to just kind of dumb down and just do what you tell it to do. Here's an example from uh, one, of, one of our internal monitoring tools at Joint. On the left, yeah, on your left, you see a graph of uh, logical read-write activity. So blue are read I.O. and the right bytes in red. You look over here, this is physical I.O. for the pool, and you notice you don't see this blue line, right? It's because all those reads are being answered directly out of memory, out of the arc. This is the kind of efficiency you get. So just beautiful. Particularly in web workloads, cloud workloads, you're doing a lot of read, a lot of stat in particular. Right? And this is exactly what you want to see. The right bytes are going to disk, nice and orderly. Or well, we're not seeing read I.O. because it's all being taken care of in memory. So observability. K stats. Uh, is there anyone who doesn't know what a case that is? One kind of couple. Um, <laughs> I missed the joke. Uh, case stats are uh, a fa fantastic repository of statistics available within Solaris. Run the case stat tool. I mean, just run case stat by itself. You get a pages and pages of output. You can get all kinds of uh, fantastic detail about what's going on in the system. And uh, ARC is definitely one of the great places we can see this. ZFS uh, ARC does have case stats. You also have case stats on, on a lot of the slab allocation stuff uh, if you want to see exactly how the kernel is using uh, uh, file buffers and things like that. 